This morning, I'm joined by Frank Mayo from the Oxford Police Department. Frank's here to tell us a little bit about some of the things we should do to keep safe this summer. Thank now, you. Um, summer always brings to mind vacations, and some of those destinations always mean crowds. So, what are some of the things that we need to do to make sure that our belongings stay safe when we're out and about in crowded areas, on a crowded beach, or wherever? Well, one of the things is if you're going to a park or something like that, keep in mind that put your valuables away. If you're storing them in your vehicle, put them in the trunk, put them under the car seat, put them somewhere. Keep only what you need on your person and try to maintain control over that, whether it be with a fanny pack or if you can keep it in your pockets and it be secure. It's best to keep the minimal amount of stuff on you at all times and anything you leave in your vehicle, lock in the trunk or put it under the seat. Make sure it's out of sight, basically. Exactly, because criminals nowadays, they look for the easy target. They will look for something they can easily access, if they can bust a window because they see a purse or uh, electronic device. Uh, they look for the easy targets. Okay. Now, if we do see something when we're out and about that looks strange, like, you know, kids in a car, animals in a car, things like that, or someone who's pacing too close to our vehicle, what, what should we do? Who should we tell? Uh, we, there's a saying going around, if you see something, say something. A lot of times we nowadays, if we see something, we avoid it, but that's the wrong action to take. Uh, when you see something odd like that, definitely um, notify law enforcement by 911 or call the local agency. Uh, if you have time and the capability, keep an eye on it. That way you could be a good witness. Uh, don't take matters into your own hands unless it's absolutely the last possible choice you could have. Okay. Now, for our employees who plan to travel this summer, what are some of the top driving safety tips that you've got for us? I would definitely say start out your trip uh, well rested, have your route planned out, um, keep track of the weather, of how everything's going weather-wise. Uh, double check the maintenance on your vehicle. Make sure that you're good to go, uh, everything's squared away, you've got your oil changed, your tires rotated, everything's good with your vehicle. And um, also, don't forget to keep some cash on hand because if you get those unexpected flat tires or something goes wrong, you may need cash and uh, some places still don't take debit cards mm -hmm. or if it's late it's at true. night. Is there an ideal or best time for travel and are the roads safer during certain hours of the day? Um, historically, between Memorial Day and Labor Day are some of the da most dangerous times to drive. Uh, typically 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. has been shown to be a um, time when most crashes occur. Uh, also, especially for teenagers traveling in the summertime and all that. Um, overall, it's, it's hard to put on a key point of when it's best. Some people leave um, very early in the morning. It depends on if you feel safe driving in dark times. But typically it's always between Memorial Day and Labor Day is shown historically to be when most crashes occur in during three and six. Okay, which makes sense. More traffic, more accidents. Now, um, you mentioned leaving out early in the morning, and I know I remember a lot of times growing up, we'd wake up at four o'clock in the morning and hit the road for vacation. For the parents out there who do that for their kids and everything, what about fatigue? What are some of the signs we should look for in ourselves or in our spouse or our the driver? Well, uh, funny you say that. Me and my family just got back from driving to Orlando for a vacation. It was a very lengthy drive. If, uh, if the driver feels that they're nodding off, they're not having problems focusing on the road, definitely pull over, get some rest, let somebody else drive. If you're riding along with the vehicle, you notice that the driver is unable to stay in the lane that they're in, uh, you notice that their head is not nodding off or uh, things just don't seem right, uh, suggest to pull over, get a cup of coffee, re-energize, re or swap drivers. Yeah. 
Oh, it is. I was just getting out, walking around the car a couple of times. Yes. Getting the blood definitely. flowing again. <laughs> now, um, this time of year, we do see a lot of sudden and very intense rain showers. We've had a few this week. Now, how should drivers handle this, and what should we do to watch out for these adverse driving conditions? On our way back from our trip, we ran into several heavy downpours that were short-lasting. Um, and we were in a lot of traffic on the interstate, which um, made me realize that slowing down is number one. If you cannot see a good distance in front of you, <clears throat> you cannot react. So slow down so that you can see properly, move over to the right-hand lane. Um, <clears throat> if need be, pull over on the side of the road or get off on the next exit and let the storm pass. Uh, but most definitely, if you cannot see within a good distance, uh, slow down a lot more. Yeah, you don't know what's happening a few cars up in front of you. Exactly. Now, um, let's talk a little bit about distractions, because that's another thing we all face when we're all in our cars. We do have a law that pre prevents texting and driving, but I know that there are a lot of other distractions that we face on the road. We do have a law that says it's illegal to text while driving. Uh, other distractions such as reading, putting on makeup, eating, handling with children in the vehicle. Um, there's numerous distractions, not only that, but all the electronics that come in vehicles nowadays that supposed to make life easier could be an, a big distract, distraction. And we see it every day. Uh, yep. Everybody's looking away from where they're going and looking at something in their vehicle looking at a GPS to see when their next turn is instead of looking at what's in front of them. And exactly. Yeah. Now, are there any punishments or fines that are in place if y'all see somebody staring at that GPS or messing with a child in the back seat? As far as distracted in those manners, no, there's not fines related to someone being distracted reading a newspaper or dealing with a child in the back seat. Uh, the punishment for texting and driving is a fine. It starts out at 25 for the first offense and goes up their own. However, though, anyone who's driving and are distracted, if they cause an accident and that accident causes the loss of life, the driver could be charged with manslaughter or other charges as well. Okay. Now, we hear about road rage incidents all the time. So, and I, I know driving down the road, it's easy to get frustrated. So how should we handle that? My advice would be to stay cool and stay calm. Uh, if possible, back off and let that person who is apparently angry go on about their way and don't get involved. Typically, there's nothing good that's going to come about it. If you allow somebody else to dictate your attitude, you're allowing them to have control over you. So just let them go about their way and back off is what I'd suggest. And if it's real, if it's bad enough, call 911. Let law enforcement get involved and figure out what's what's going on with that individual. That's a good perspective. Thank you for that. And then now, during the summer, we're kind of bookmarked by major holidays. We've got a major holiday right in the middle of the summer. One that's mm -hmm. coming up, July 4th. I know that those holidays are a big time for drinking. What about DUIs this year? Uh, typically, any summertime activity, because of the heat and all, we see an increase in alcohol-related offenses. Um, yes, DUI, public intoxication, and so on. Be mindful of those holidays, like you were saying, that there will there is a potential for more uh, intoxicated drivers to be on the roadway, and be more aware of yourself. Be more aware of your surroundings. So. Yes, there is an increase during summertime, so be mindful of that. Okay. Now, if our employees have any additional questions, how can they contact y'all? Feel free to contact us at the Oxford Police Department. It's 256-831-3121 or visit our website at oxfordpd.org. Okay. Thank you very much for joining us today, Thank Frank. you for having me.